Hi, I'm Chef Robin. Welcome to another Hands in the Kitchen workshop. Uh, today we're going to be discussing all about plant proteins. We want to thank the Heinenberg Senior Community Center for letting us use this lovely space. And now we'll get started. So plant proteins, we're going to talk about why you might want to eat proteins, why you need them, why you might be confused about a complete protein and an incomplete protein, what's essential, what's non-essential. We're going to shift into speaking about plant-based protein. And I'm going to talk about 10 that are at the top of the list for the amount of protein that they provide for you. And then we're going to talk about how to tofu. Some people feel like tofu is very mysterious and uh, not really sure about where to go with it, but are interested about learning how to use it. So how to tofu. We're going to talk a little bit about menu switching up, some recipes, protein packages, and I hope you enjoy. So thanks for coming. I really need to emphasize how the market is driven by health conscious food. You cannot go to a grocery store today without having a natural food section in it, without finding organic produce in it, now finding plant-based proteins right alongside with the hamburgers. So really people want to have that option to eat healthy and grocery stores and markets are responding to that and prices are coming down accessibility is there. And also oftentimes recipe cards are there or recipes are actually on the product for you to use. So the mystification of how to eat healthier is slowly being kind of uh, taken out of our hands because now when we go to our regular supermarket, there's products there that are educating us right there on the shelf. So along with I was in the grocery store and this was right by the cash register. So it's not an unknown thing now, plant-based foods, plant-forward diets, very much in the trend that's gonna stay. It's not just a fad, it's a realistic food movement. So, and today, I'm gonna learn all about it, so. so Let's discuss why we need proteins in our diet at all. If you think about the healthy plate now, which is the determinant for how we eat instead of the food pyramid that used to be used in elementary school with a very little bit of grain and a very little bit of vegetable. Now, the healthy plate is more than half vegetables and fruit. And your protein serving is four ounces of a recommended lean protein. Just to give you an idea of what four ounces is, it's about the size of the palm of your hand, okay? And a cup of whole grains. So this is a cup, not very much. So basically Americans are eating way too much food and overdoing. Really, it's not the issue of not getting enough protein. We have enough protein in our diet. The issue is the source of the protein that we're getting. So let's just talk a little bit about protein itself. Protein is a micronutrient, just like fat is a nutrient, just like carbohydrate is a nutrient. It's composed of amino acid chains, okay? Now our body is incredibly complex and needs 20 amino acids. Of those 20, we create 11 or modify cells to become amino acids. So that's happening all the time in our body, but nine to 10 other amino acids are considered essential and our body does not create those and we have to get those from food. So how we get those, it's very important and we need those for our protein intake. If we don't get them, we could be at risk of malnutrition. We could be at risk of our heart weakening, great issues of fatigue, your hair breaking, your nails splitting. You know when you have a deficiency, you're tired all the time. So if we get the right amount of protein and good protein, we're gonna get great cell growth. Our tissues are gonna repair easily. So if you get a cut or a scrape, it doesn't take months for that to you know, heal up. 
we're going to have good antibody production, and we're going to have muscle building and great immune response should we become ill with some sort of virus or otherwise. I won't mention that one. But, um, so it is essential that we have protein in our diet. The important thing, again, that I want you to remember is the source of the protein is what we want to give attention to today. So how much protein is, there's a lot of different factors that contribute to how much protein you need. Your gender contributes to it. Your physical activity contributes to it. Even if your location, if you're in the high altitudes of Peru, you might need more protein in your diet than, say, here in Vermont. So there's a lot of different things. Your, <clears throat> your health in general also contributes to how much protein you might need. But there are qualifications that the Academy of Science has made seven grams for each 20 pounds of body weight. So when we think about calculating grams and where our protein's coming from, and it's a big question mark, production or manufacturers of food sources want to help us out. You cannot buy a product today that's not going to have a sticker on it that says what the ingredients are. On that sticker, it's going to tell you how many grams of protein, what the serving size is, sometimes even how to use that protein. So <laughs> it's not all on us to try to figure out things. You may need to have a magnifying glass to read those nutritional guides, but the manufacturers are trying to help us out, and they are legally responsible for putting that information on product. So if you see product and you wonder, how much does hummus give me as far as grams of protein? It's going to tell you somewhere on this label. So <clears throat> if you're about 140 pounds and in good health, they're recommending about 50 grams a day. As you go up in weight, the recommendation goes up as well. So when we eat foods for protein, we're also consuming different fats, sodium, fiber, nutrients, etc. So that's why the source is so important to us to be aware of. You might eat that four ounce piece of sirloin, which actually most people are not eating four ounces. They're eating maybe even up to 12 ounces. But Every time you eat that sirloin, you're also maybe gathering a large amount of protein, gram-wise, but you're also taking in a fair amount of saturated fat. You're also taking in a product that's a little bit more difficult for our body to digest. When you eat three strips of bacon, which who doesn't in Vermont, but that's nine grams of fat. And of that nine grams of fat, 3.8 grams are saturated. So Saturated fats are not spe specifically the healthiest fat for you to take in. So you just want to be aware that even though you may be garnering a fair amount of protein through that meat product, you're also getting, with bacon, 435 milligrams of sodium. Daily, your sodium intake is about 2,000. So if you're taking in a fifth of that at breakfast with three slices of bacon, you're already like challenging your day with salt or sodium so and your body. But if we look at a plant protein, such as lentils, if you eat a cup of lentils with your salad or just eat them as is, 18 grams of protein. 18 is, I don't know, roughly a little bit more than a quarter of 50. So um, you're a quarter there to your daily need. And you're getting 15 grams of good fiber. You're also getting zero grams of saturated fat. And you're also getting zero grams of sodium, unless you totally sauce it with salt. So clean product, clean protein. The source of protein, rather the amount, is what makes the difference for your health. OK, so just that's just something I really want to drive home. <laughs> and plus, 
Lentils are so incredibly beautiful and diverse. These are uh, a mung bean lentil. This is a yellow doll lentil. This is called a French lentil. It's gray and green. And they all cook incredibly easily. They all can be used in soups, stews. Um, I even have a suggestion for lentil meatballs. So it's a great meat substitute, and it's really easy to deal with. So, all right. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit. I think we went over this. It is cooked, they yes. They expand a lot. No. Lentils do not expand like a pasta or a rice. They, they do not. not. So, um, OK. I think we went over most of this. Let's talk a little bit more about choosing those plant-based proteins. And this kind of is just reaffirming what we spoke about before. Um, there's food safety concerns. When you hear about the mega farm of cattle, or even go down 22A, and I am not dissing dairy farmers at all, but when you see the cows that stay in the barn, it's not the bucolic cow on the green hillside. That's not where your milk is coming from. Your milk is coming from a cow that stays in a barn 24-7, gets milked, lives there, poops there, you know. So it's, it's a concern for people. It kind of ties into animal ethics. It's the same thing with chicken and the egg. Mass production of food products, you have to give those animals antibiotics to keep them healthy because they're in closed spaces and they could get diseased very easily without antibiotics. Sometimes they're given hormones for production of food. So all of these things come through to us. And although our bodies are very adaptable, the more that we eat that kind of food, the more it's going to play an active role in our health. You know, there's been studies that say um, animal proteins can lead to blah, 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 blah. And you're going to find those hardcore people that won't touch an animal protein. You're going to find those hardcore people that won't eat an egg unless it's free range, cage free, grass fed, all of it. I am more of the attitude to be a flexitarian and try to eat the rainbow and try to eat as healthily as you can economic-wise and uh, patience-wise in the kitchen and time-wise. You have to be realistic for yourself. But if you have health issues, you might want to be aware of the other side of the world of proteins, so not just all the time going down the red meat aisle. So um, plants are naturally less fat, less calorie, heart healthy, digestible, all of these. Uh, and the environment, too. So there's a lot of talk about climate change. There's a lot of talk about methane. When you have those huge farms of cows, like 22A or out in Montana or wherever they have thousands of cows in a beef lot together, that methane is creating some change for our client. That methane gas is given off by so many cows, so many cows together. If they are living their life just to be put on our plate, yeah, I don't know, you know, what are we, we tossing up the environment for a steak? I don't, I don't know. So. Um, it's something to think about. Also, let's just think about economics. A lot of people are really put off by health food. They think it's too expensive. But I just wanted to illustrate for you one of my own. <laughs> this is my Achilles heel. And I'm not promoting a product. I'm not, you know, in fact, I usually get the smart food white cheddar popcorn. That can cost up to $4 a bag. If it, this was on sale for two for five, which is still expensive for a snack, two fifty. dollars So two fifty, four dollars $4 for a snack, that's a lot for me to, to you know, put out in my budget. But I can buy a bag of popcorn. 
or a bag of microwavable popcorn for under about $2. And I can buy nutritional yeast, which is right here. At the health food store, I can buy as much as I want or as little as I want, add nutritional yeast to my popcorn, and I'm going to have samples for you guys to try. And to me, cost comparison, it's better for me to actually go with the cheaper popcorn that I pop and add nutritional yeast to it and enjoy it than actually contributing <laughs> to the bank of wise or smart food. So just something to keep in mind. Also, again, with economics, your serving sizes don't have to be quite so huge as we oftentimes put on our plate. So, um, and we spoke about increased access. We spoke about that market drive of people wanting to eat healthier and the grocery stores responding and the manufacturers responding to that market drive and having available product for us. So. All right. So these are 10 plant-based proteins. Let me come this way, sorry. <clears throat> that maybe you are familiar with, maybe you're not. We're going to talk about them, and then we're going to talk about using them in menus. The first one is seitan, or what's commonly called wheat meat. Personally, this is not a favorite of mine because I stopped eating meat because I did not care for that texture. But for people who like that texture and are reluctant to give up a meat kind of enjoyable experience, seitan is when you take flour and water and you knead and knead and knead and pour off the starch of that flour. And what you're left with is basically just the strands of gluten that come together in a brick form. That doesn't sound very appetizing, but a lot of people are all about it. This is what seitan will look like when you buy it. It looks like a meat product. It's going to slice like a meat product. You can fry it like a meat product or put it in your lasagna like a meat product, but it's made from flour. It's not healthy for people who have any gluten issues or celiac. But for those people who want a real shot of a plant protein, this is one that's going to be there for you. <coughs> it also, this has recommendations on how to use the product. It stores in the refrigerator after you've opened it up. It's not incredibly expensive compared to ground beef or sirloin steak, so it is available. In the soy family, soy is a complete protein. So soy has all of the essential amino acids that we need. So soy, which, when it's turned into tempeh or tofu or just edamame, which are the soybeans, for snacking, you can buy these in the freezer and roast them, roast them yourself, or you can use them as a snack product and buy them already put together. But <coughs> tofu comes packaged in water. You drain the water off. I'm going to do that later. Slice it. You can marinate it. You can put it in the oven. I have some for you to taste and try. Uh, tofu is very adaptable to flavor because it is almost flavorless. So whatever you wanted to use it in, whatever kind of, whether it was in a southwestern direction or maybe a Thai direction or just good old American flavor, salt and pepper, it's going to abs absorb that flavor and transfer that flavor to your plate. So tempeh is another product that's made from soybeans. This has soybeans, but also five different grains in it, so it's really healthy for you. Tempeh is used similarly to tofu, but it has a thicker composition. I just want to show you what it. But it also can be marinated, and then usually, I'll get a Ziploc bag, put a really simple marinade together, 
Maybe tamari, sesame, maybe balsamic vinegar and a little oil. It really is up to you. And I'll cut strips, throw them in that Ziploc bag, toss them around, maybe refrigerate them overnight, maybe not. Maybe I'll just use them in the next 40 minutes. The longer, of course, with anything that's marinated, the more flavor it will absorb. But then I just pop it in the oven at the beginning of my meal prep. And I'll flip it about halfway through a 20 minute cook time. You have your protein. You can pair that with a rice. You can pair that with a quinoa. If you pair it with quinoa, you get a double shot because quinoa is a complete protein as well. So <coughs> lentils are really a star. Lentils are really a nutritional powerhouse. But all the beans, chickpeas, kidney beans, pinto beans, all of them have a protein component to them. This might be where you've heard about complementary proteins before. These proteins are not complete in that they don't have all of the amino acids of those essentials that we need. But paired with another vegetarian product, like half the world does, rice and beans, corn and black beans, um, it completes that protein profile so that our body can use all of it. It used to be thought that that had to happen at that meal. But now we know that medically, our liver and the rest of our digestive system can hold for 24 hours and release products that we need. So during a 24 hour, pro during a 24 hour period, maybe you have your lentils at lunchtime, maybe you have your rice at dinner, they're going to combine up in your system and you're going to get that shot of complete protein. So it doesn't have to be right there, right then on that plate. You do want to complement. You do want to make sure that you are, if you are eating a protein, a plant protein that's not complete, you do want to try and balance it out. But also, again, it's not so much the amount or it's not so much to be feverish about where your proteins are adding up to. It's more important where they're coming from. So. <clears throat> All right. Uh, peanuts and almonds are also star protein packages. Um, peanuts are great. They also have good fat for you. So nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is something that I use fairly often in the kitchen. But I cannot really explain to you exactly how it comes to be. I know that there are a lot of yeast all the time in the air. You know, that's how sourdough comes to be. Nutritional yeast is called a deactivated yeast. But to me, it's just a replacement for cheese. It has a very cheesy, nutty flavor. It's very easy to use. I sprinkled it on your popcorn today because that's my alternative go-to for the $4 bag of po popcorn. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. It is a protein product. It is a complete protein product. So I just think it's something that is uh, something to become a little bit more familiar with. You know, if you like to have pasta a lot, but you're trying not to be so dairy dependent, you can toss your pasta in nutritional yeast and see how you care for that. Or you can put nutrition, you can try it on this popcorn also and see how you like it, so. Robin, wh Robin where do you get your nutritional yeast? Uh, just City from Market. City Market, yeah. Do you take your own container? Is it in bulk? bulk or? It is in bulk. Oh, it is in bulk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is in bulk. You can buy as little as you want. You can buy as much as you want. But and you can't find it anywhere else. Canada for area. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think probably uh, Trader Joe's carries it, but I don't. And they probably have their own brand. I don't know. Um, 
And then there are vegetables also that are, and fruits that are high in protein. All vegetables and fruits, all living things have some amount of protein to them, some just a little bit more than others. But broccoli, kale, those green hearty vegetables that we need to include in our diet, and bananas, nectarines, and blackberries are at the top of the list for protein. But all fruits, all vegetables, all living things have protein. So let's talk about making that switch. So is, can everybody see this OK? All right. When you make any change to your diet, it's great to be excited and eager and gung-ho, but you also have to realize that your body has been used to a certain pattern of eating. And any time you change that pattern of eating, your body is going to respond accordingly. So I suggest a meal a week, or maybe a meal every two weeks, or maybe a lunch or a breakfast every you know, two times a week. Somehow or other, just slowly be, begin to involve more plant proteins in your diet, not lentils every night for five days in a row. It's not going to, you're going to like burn out on lentils. You won't have fun. You know, you'll just be bean eating crazy. So um, go slowly. And also, don't just eliminate that meat protein from your dish. You can't just take protein out and become more healthy. You absolutely, for all these reasons we discussed, you absolutely need to have protein in your diet. So make a substitute, but don't eliminate, OK? So unless you are totally going overboard, you know, if you feel like you are just consuming not enough vegetables, not enough fruit, not enough whole grains, and only protein, then I would say maybe you could think about. But for most people, we want to just substitute a plant protein and not eliminate a protein altogether. Also, don't be intimidated. Just because, you know, I don't really care for seitan, it might be your brand new treasured dish. I don't know. Um, and also, again, there are so many publications. There are recipes hanging in City Market. There are recipes on products that we buy. So it's not a matter of, and God, the cooking shows, bing. You know, it's, just, it's just everywhere that you're going to find inspiration and also direction. And we're going to talk a little bit about how maybe not to be intimidated in just a minute. But don't let the thought of changing something be too challenging. Just kind of take it as fun. Just kind of like have a, you know, have it be something that will be exciting for you if you have a caretaker that comes in or a relative that visits or a friend that you like to get together. Just make it an event, you know? So, um, and rethink your plate, okay? Again, the healthy plate is now mostly vegetables and fruit, a small amount of protein, a small amount of whole grain. Most of our years, we have been driven by meat being that star of the plate. We need to totally rethink that and let our vegetables be the star of the plate once in a while. Maybe not every single meal, but maybe a fair number of plate meals. So let your veggies be the star. And then challenge yourself and create a new favorite that you can uh, adapt to your lifestyle, adapt to your flavor profile, that you can have fun with, that's not a scary thing to do, but that's a fun thing to do. Um, a chopped salad is just basically chopped romaine, chopped tomato, chopped celery. Throw some quinoa on there. Quinoa is that complete protein. It cooks very easily. It's really tasty. It also has a nutty flavor. So super easy to do. And it could be, instead of quinoa, it could be farro. It could be rice. It could be another grain that's also going to bring you some protein to that chopped salad. 
Uh, Brussels sprouts are one of those leading vegetables, but you can make it fun. Add some walnuts, punch it up with some protein from a nut. Add some cranberry for some sweetness. Um, and then just pop them in the oven on a tray and sheet roast them. Uh, Thai noodles with edamame and peanuts. Another fun thing to do, instead of marinara every single time you have pasta, or mac and cheese every time you have pasta, make some noodles, take a tablespoon of peanut butter, whip it in while it's still warm, toss some edamame on top. They could even be these that are roasted for you. And enjoy it. Just It will be fun. It'll be flavorful. Um, <clears throat> so try a new familiar. That's another thing. It's like kind of if you have go-to recipes that you like and enjoy, maybe you have the most favorite chicken salad recipe ever, mash up some chickpeas and do that salad without the chickpeas, I mean without the chicken, but the chickpeas replacing and see if you like it. It's going to have a flavor profile different than your chicken salad. It's going to have a healthier flavor profile, but it's also going to have those flavors that you know that you like and enjoy. Um, if you always make chili with hamburger, leave the hamburger out and add a few more beans. Black beans or kidneys or pintos, very easy. There's a million chili recipes. If you like barbecued chicken or barbecued shrimp, instead of doing those proteins one evening, take tofu. And I said that I would get into this tofu for you guys, and I will. So tofu is packed in water. It's in a brick form, but it's very easy to use. Most people, myself included, will slice fairly thick slices, set them on a tea towel for a few minutes, kind of just pat a little bit of that, especially if I want to do on top stove sauteing, I'll just pat some of that water out of that. But the, one, the tofu sample that I made for you today, I just put in that Ziploc marinated bag overnight, and then popped them in the oven. So very easy to use, very low calorie, very no fat, so heart healthy, pretty easy to add into your diet. Um, and then if you're a spaghetti lover, but you don't want to use ground beef, lentils, you can cook up some lentils. Add that egg that you use, add that little bit of bread that you use, use the seasonings that you traditionally use, and they will make beautiful burgers. I mean, they will make beautiful meatballs. So, and um, there's, like we said before, the manufacturers and the grocery stores are responding. There are so many different veggie burgers you can buy now. It's incredible. I mean, you could do like a whole taste test of veggie burgers if you wanted to, because there are that many varieties out there now. So, um, and then I also brought you my favorite, like my go-to, my Achilles heel is popcorn. So I brought you popcorn today with a little nutritional yeast just to try. So just some familiar things, but changing them up to be a little bit more healthy. If we want to talk about making veggies our star, lots of different ways to go about doing that. You can make a lovely salad, and instead of using chopped romaine, or instead of using mescaline mix, have kale be the base. Then add some citrus, very lovely. They go together very well, very beautiful. Um, soy and mushrooms and tofu go together. All of this stuff is super easy. You can just toss stuff in your sauce or marinade and just put it in the oven and let it go and let it, you know, uh, do its thing, crisp up. Uh, roasted squash for lasagna. I've, I know that a lot of people make lasagna with zucchini and summer squash, but you could also use a beautiful roasted squash, butternut squash. Just cut it, cook it put it out, 
add your cream and cheese or marinara sauce. Um, and then caramelized broccoli and shallots, very easy. Another roasting in the oven, just tossing them in a little olive oil or oil of your choice and letting them go and on a slow, low oven. Very tasty. So, um, and then we talked about creating a new favorite. So um, that's pretty much, oh, no, I'm sorry. I did want to talk to you one minute about, again, how the response of the manufacturer and the grocery store to health driven. Um, I was in the grocery store just yesterday. This is a totally new product. I'm not advising you to run out and buy this product, but peanut butter is a great protein. It's already assembled kind of for you, produced for you, um, in that you don't have to buy peanuts, put them in your Vegematic or Cuisinart and add oil or whatever else you want to. This peanut butter is called protein peanut butter because they have actually made peanut butter for you and then folded in a pea. They've taken peas, which is one of our plant proteins. They've taken peas, dehydrated them, turned them into a powder, and then folded them in to this peanut butter to the point where you cannot even taste the pea, but it's just jacked up the grams of protein per serving. Also, jacked up the price. So just be aware when you see new products that it is in response to uh, customer desire. But also uh, be kind of aware that you are probably, if you are eating a healthy plate, which has a grain, which has a lean protein or a plant protein, and then a lot of vegetables and fruits, you are probably meeting all of your protein needs. This, I think, is a little bit, I don't know, not, I don't want to say it's not a kosher product. I do feel like there are some people that may benefit from this, but I also feel like it's kind of manipulative and that people are really now very protein aware and that they're just responding to that and kind of making, because if you look at these two products as far as the grams of protein in them, the difference is like three grams. So those three grams could definitely be made up somewhere else in your diet. So anyway. Um, but I would like to uh, let you guys have a sample of a tofu that I made. I would like for you to sample the popcorn with nutritional yeast just to see how you care for it. Of course, it's, you know, popcorn is best right out of the pot, and I didn't do it here in the microwave. I did it at home this morning. But um, anyway, just to see how you enjoy it. And and if you do have questions, I'll try to answer. I don't know that I'll absolutely be able to answer every question, but. Robin, I have to say that smart popcorn is my Achilles heel as well, so I'm really excited. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I could eat the whole bag. I know, it, it's great, so anyway. Uh huh. And uh, one is on the autism scale, and they easily throw up. Oh, too good. bad. And they don't eat green things except cucumber, huh. strawberries. But um, what about making them smoothies? Used to, well, they don't like that. They don't like that mm -hmm. texture. No, okay. I'm wondering. Um, one did used to eat peanut butter really routinely, <laughs> smooth only. Uh huh. Hmm. So I'm glad to hear that there is a peanut butter. Of course, they, they can distinguish mm -hmm. between different kinds of pizza if they do eat pizza. Okay. But there are certain, certain pizza makers that they won't touch. Mm 
Right. Fussy, fussy, and now they're teenagers. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah, well. That, is that a smooth, just, the protein one is smooth? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that would go down the hatch, maybe. If they this is tell. creamy. But they can tell there's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Robin, I'm hooked. Yeah. <laughs> How much of this did you make? <laughs> There's lots up here, guys. I was, we were, if it had been a nice day, we were planning on uh, 12 or 15 people. So mm. please help yourself. If there's any baggies, you can take some home. Enjoy. But this is a so. great alternative. And you didn't add salt. I didn't right? add salt. I didn't add butter. Okay. So, so you just popped um, the corn. I popped the corn and canola and oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, while it was still warm, I just took like a table. I used this size popcorn. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it made a lot of, uh, a big amount. Yeah. Um, and while it was still in the pot, I took about a tablespoon of this wow. nutritional yeast wow. and put on it. So. And can I ask you how you cook the tofu? Because that was really good, too. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. OK, so the tofu was basically how I said. I got a Ziploc bag. And I made a little marinade of sesame oil, little tamari. Um, I think there was maybe mirin or maybe rice wine vinegar. I think, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Um, just some staples from my pantry. And um, tossed the tofu in that, put everything in the bag, uh, kind of let it hang out in the refrigerator. I don't ordinarily. Um, I find tofu much easier to deal with in a block shape mm -hmm. like this. Um, but when you make it this way, I mean, you're, when, if you do a block shape like this, you're going to get the lovely crust on the bottom and the lovely crust on the top. Um, when you do it this way in, in a hotter oven, you want your oven to be like at 400 instead of 350, which is usually what everybody keeps their oven at. But um, you're basically evaporating the moisture out of the tofu and letting it soak up the marinade. So what hasn't been soaked up before in the refrigerator, if it's in the bottom of your um, uh -huh. pie tin or sheep pan or whatever is going to kind of adhere to that tofu while more moisture evaporates out. That's what cooking does is actually evaporates moisture out of things. Yeah. So it's going to kind of give it a more firmer texture. Yeah. This is extra firm anyway, because that's what I find easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. Tofu comes in soft, silken, medium firm, you know, the sky's the limit, really, in what people are asking for and what the grocery store is having now. It's incredible to me. I mean, years back, really, you couldn't find a lot of this product without having to go to a co op. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, Hannaford's, Marker 32, Shaw's, even, mm -hmm. sorry. No, nothing against Shaw's. But even Shaw's has a natural food section where you can find good, healthy food, you know, lower in salt, lower in sugar, um, all of the tofu and soybean products that I spoke about, seitan. And this product, too, guys, if you don't feel like fooling with it in terms of making your own dressing, this comes in a million. It comes in barbecue. It comes in chili and lime. It comes in. I, I, don't, I can't even think, but there were like 12 different kinds of seitan that you could get for, you know, mm -hmm. dining pleasure, so cooking pleasure. So. Okay, can mm -hmm. I just ask you one more question? About the yeah, of course, of course. When you took it out of your marinade, did you pat it dry before you put it? No. I just let the, after it goes in the marinade, mm -hmm. I just let the oven do whatever. Okay. And then how long did you leave it at a 400 oven? It's probably 400 for 10 minutes. I turned the pan around. I probably flipped it at 10, and then another 10. Usually about 20 for tempeh and 20 for tofu. I'm sorry. Um, if, your <laughs> oven was, if your oven was at a lower temperature, uh -huh. you could just pace the rest of your meal that way. It would just yeah. take longer. Yeah. I just kind of, you so know. So when you got your tofu and it's cooked, how, do you incorporate it in a dish, or how do you serve it? 
So usually for me, if I was doing tofu like this, I would probably have some kind of rice or rice salad on the side, and I would just fan it against that, and then I would have a green vegetable. Yeah. And that's, you know, and then a tangerine so at, after on your, dinner. On your healthy plate, you have a tofu kind of its own star. It's, it's on your plate right. with a salad or whatever yeah. you're serving it with. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But, um, so I didn't know this when I was buying this magazine. This magazine, fruit, I mean, forks and knives, is basically vegan. In other words, this magazine is not going to have dairy foods in it or meat products in it. But it does have a lot still, a lot of very interesting combinations. And um, their to I think they had a tofu recipe in here that I was interested in. But they do. Like they have a dilled asparagus rice pilaf. That sounds great. Yeah. Doesn't that sound great? Yeah. You know, or a roasted corn succotash, or you know. So, um, but generally with tofu, I personally like it better when it's on its own. I don't necessarily crumble it up and fold it into things mm -hmm. because I I like the cleanness of the plate more so. I'm not yeah. saying that I've never made a casserole, because <laughs> yeah. I have made casseroles, yeah. kind of. But, um, and I've definitely made stews, and I've definitely made soups. Yeah. But um, generally, with tofu, just for my own personal preference, yeah. I usually keep it. And I like, like how that. you have, I mean, I would prefer it like that as well, I think, because I like how you have like a crust on each uh -huh. side of it. It's yeah. a little bit more bulk or yeah, it gives it a little bit more texture, yeah, gives yeah. it a little bit more flavor, yeah. you know, and you could easily put this on a salad and have a lot of fun with it. You yeah. can make a peanut dressing. It'd be great. Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, thank so. you, because I've been wanting to sure. do tofu at all, because yeah. I'm just a little scared of sure. how do you serve it so that it's appetizing yeah. and people will eat it. Yeah. But that's the bottom line. If they're not going to eat it, you're... Oh, yeah, there's no point in messing around with it. Yeah. And um, the thing about tofu is it does come in a block that's sometimes even too big for me. So if you have leftover tofu, it will need to be stored in water. The water does not need to be changed every day, but it does need to be kept in the refrigerator in that water until you use it again. Yeah. So. Great. Thank you so much, Robin. Of course, yeah. It's very informative. And Thanks. Add addendum to that, how long can it be? Mm. I just threw out a block recently from said best by November 20, November last November, and I threw it out. And, this, and the second part of that is, have you ever heard of Moulis uh, chocolate pie? Moulis meaning without dairy. Mm -hmm. You use silken tofu, tofu. Uh -huh. one block of it. Yeah. You put it in the blender with a couple tablespoons of honey. You melt a cup of chocolate bits, okay. semi-sweet chocolate, and you combine that and put it in a crust right. of your choice. Yeah. And then it's refrigerated. You refrigerate yeah. it for a couple of hours and sets up. Oh my really? That's so rich. Yeah. But it's healthier for you than all the butter and the eggs that necessarily you would be getting in a slice of chocolate pie. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Would you be willing to share that recipe? My I daughter know. cannot eat dairy, wheat, uh, whatever. A whole host of stuff, but she could eat that. Yeah. And desserts are hard when you're on a diet like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you would just want to yeah. look for a gluten-free crust or yeah. whatever crust they that she could sell eat. Those. Yeah, they do now. Yeah, it, I'm telling you, yeah. the grocery stores are, you know, working with us, so. Right. Anyway. I've fallen in love with roasted uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the recipe that I've used uh, from Blue Apron um, asks me to um, douse them with olive oil and salt and pepper them, and then shove them in the 4, 450 oven for 18 minutes. Uh-huh. And they mm. come out. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Candy. Yeah. That's great. And I guess the olive oil is not a bad oil. No, olive oil is a pretty good oil. But I do carrots yeah. with that, too. Yeah. Yeah, and there you go. You have a star protein on your plate. <laughs> good, good. Um, 
Okay. Also, I found that if you do shop at Costco, their bags, and they're not boxes anymore, they've gotten rid of the plastic box, they're now plastic bags, of the baby spinach uh -huh. lasts and lasts in the fridge. Okay. Um, many times, spinach just comes little Yeah, little and little it's little a, little right, and it's gone like that, yeah, unless you use it all. Not, huh. I don't know what they do to it. Huh. Well, let's circle back to the tofu in the refrigerator. Yeah. Um, I think you can keep tofu, I'm not going to say indefinitely. If you change the water that the tofu is in, I would say that you could keep tofu in the refrigerator up to two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, if you don't change the water, that water is going to get, because even, you know, even if you're using filtered water, it still has things from Burlington water in it. And it's going to affect, it's going to break down that tofu, even if it's in the refrigerator. But if you change the water and keep it clean, I'd say two to three weeks is pretty good. This so. particular box has never been opened. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's kind of broken yeah. hard to dump it, but I've been afraid yeah. of it for months. Yeah, yeah I, gotcha. it's a hard one to call. I don't know, you know, I probably would have opened it and taken a big whiff and maybe jumped right in and used it if I didn't have any, you know, anything else for dinner. Um, but it is, it is important to be cautious. It is important to kind of like be aware. They do put those dates on there for a reason, although I think a lot of times it's um, not, not, not very, yeah. you know. I did open it, smelled it, it smelled fine, but I did put it in my compost. Uh-huh. What are you yeah. doing in compost? Can I ask okay. a question before we lose anybody? And if I could also ask of you, if you would think if there are specific topics that you would like to have covered over the spring and summer going forward. I will be doing a workshop at least once a month, if not maybe as the summer comes on, maybe even more often. Um, but let me know what you want to learn about and we'll go for it. On the HANDS website, there are uh, videos about salt, sugar, fats, oil, uh, shopping on a budget, menu planning, meal prep, so I've done quite a few in the video format because of COVID, but now that it's opening up to an audience, I want to do specifically what people are interested in learning about. So, and we'll do, hopefully, um, we'll do some hands-on and more sampling and um, go from there.